morning all. Uh, I know your first urgent question will be, is the harvest in? Is that your first urgent? All right. The harvest is in, and it was a good harvest, and we had a long and wonderful season to get it in. So we're, uh, we had a lot of Thanksgiving uh, on the Thanksgiving occasion. Let me just, uh, in a few minutes, uh, describe a little bit of what has happened and what is happening in the farm movement internationally. We're part of the I'm part of the Farmers Union here in Canada, and the Farmers Union was one of the founding members of the Via Campesina, which is a global peasant, small-scale farmer, indigenous, women's, rural people's movement. And it happened in a most, I should say, unlikely way. Uh, leadership from the progressive organizations from various parts of the world were gathered by an NGO in, in Belgium 20 years ago, 21 years ago, and there was an agenda as these things go, and it was, uh, it was uh, structured. And the farm leadership decided amongst themselves that the agenda that was so urgent in front of them had to take priority, that they had to find their own voice. And it was a tense meeting and a contentious meeting, but the key learning was, the key piece was, that they had to speak in their own voice. They could no longer be instruments of or, um, how, how should I say, being used as uh, exhibits for NGO work and other people's work. They had to have their own voice. And that was the first seminal learning, that they had to speak from where they were and build their own movement, their own, uh, their own place. They took over the agenda. And that's not easy to do because uh, you need to be proud of yourself before you can speak. You need to be confident that you are somebody and know your own identity. And we here in Canada, as elsewhere, are very well aware that the whole peasant language, even the word peasant, is in some ways an insult. It's not a place of pride. It's very marginalized. So that was, in some ways, the moment where uh, not only did we find our own voice, build our own, start to build our own movement, but we found ourselves too in a in a in a collective way it happened not by magic although it was mysterious it happened because we were all confronting a global agenda those were and this was uh, during the time when the GATT was being negotiated uh, which is now the WTO and agriculture for the first time was being uh, engaged as the the one of the key portfolios that was going to be liberalized and people everywhere farmers everywhere whether they were uh, a peasant in Bangladesh or Honduras or me in, in Saskatchewan, farming in Saskatchewan, we understood that this trade agenda, this global trade agenda, would move it beyond any of our national governments, would reshape agriculture, what we were doing, how we were farming, and incidentally, how you would all be eating. Uh, at someone else's table, at the global negotiating table, would be taken over by the agribusiness sector, and we would be further marginalized, displaced, persecuted, and erased. And that danger, that common danger, was enough for us to both recognize ourselves and recognize our common interests. And that was the genesis of the global movement. But we are so different. I, who firm in a, in a modest way in Saskatchewan, my neighbors would say in a very small way, um, uh, still farm more acreage than m most of the leadership of Honduras put together, for example, or, or the Indian leadership. So our sizes are so different, our ways of farming, our contexts, our cultures, everything is so different. Our languages, the first time we met, Ah, okay. Uh, so let me just wrap up here. The first time we met, it was almost impossible to speak to each other, and we had to use the major colonial languages in translation. And what we learned from all of that is when you have a common agenda and you know yourself and you start to love each other, diversity is not only tolerated. Diversity is cherished. It is our strength 
in the movement to be diverse.